This is Mark Spencer from Ripple Training. Uh, thank you for purchasing this corkboard template. This is a little video tutorial to give you some tips to get the best use out of the template. And if you didn't purchase the template but you're watching this video, I'd recommend taking a look. We go over a lot of little tips that are very helpful about how to use motion with templates in general that, that may be useful for you. So first of all, let's just play the template so we can see what we've got here. Okay, so that's how the template works. Uh, a couple notes about it here. The content that you see, these are drop zones where these pictures are, and this is just some example content. It's not supplied with the template. Uh, the idea is, you, of course, you add your own content. And then the text, there's actually several different fonts in use here. There's one for the title. There's a font used for these images on the little Polaroids, and there's a font here. And um, the font on the images is a custom font that I created, which is included with the template. So you get that font. I provide it for you to use. The fonts here and here are fonts that you would need to download, and we've included links to those. You need to check the license agreement to make sure that you use them in accordance with the license. So just a couple notes on that. Now, I want to show you how to use this first in Final Cut, and then how to modify it in Motion. So let's go to Final Cut. And what I'm going to do is I have several sequences here to show you some options. My first sequence here is an HD 1920 by 1080 2997 sequence. I'm going to go to Sequence, and I'm going to choose Add Master Template. In the template browser, you can see I actually have two different corkboard themes. When you download the corkboard theme, you, you purchase it either for Motion 3 or Motion 4. I have them both installed here, Motion 3 and Motion 4. The reason for that is the Motion 4 version includes animating the camera with a framing behavior while the Motion 3 uses uh, keyframes. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in Motion. Either theme has three different versions in it. An HD that is 1920 by 1080, 2997, uh, 2398, and 25 frames per second. So I'm just going to select this one here, and you get a little preview. Uh, the previews look a little distorted. That's just the way they work. You can see the correct 1920 by 1080 and the duration, everything right here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and choose an insert edit to bring this template, which matches the sequence settings, okay? It's a 2997, 1920 by 1080, and it matches the sequence. The idea is generally you want to try to match the sequence, although you don't always have to. Uh, we try to provide the most common ones, and then I'm going to give you some options here. So I'll click Insert. And uh, it takes a second, and the template will drop down into our timeline. There it is. I'll back up the playhead a little bit so we can see each of our drop zones. Now, when you do this, if you have not installed these particular fonts, you might get some automatic font substitution for those letters, for those, those glyphs. In that case, you would need to install those fonts, or you could open up this project in Motion and use different fonts. Now, what happens when you, when you use the master template browser to place that motion project file on the timeline, that template, it also opens up into the viewer and the control tab comes forward. So the basic process of replacing the content is, is pretty dead simple. The only thing to be a little careful about is the drop zones are organized from bottom to top. So you can see it says drop zone one, two, three, four. So this is the first one the camera comes to. So for instance, if I go grab this clip of the couple and drop it in drop zone one, then they'll appear there. And I'll drag the clip of the kid and put it in two. The brunette, I'll put in three. And then the family, I'll put in four. So you kind of go from the bottom up. And you can see any content that you drop in, whether it's graphics or movies, will just fill those drop zones. To change the text, it's the same idea that you really want to start from the bottom up. So I'll go to the bottom. Here's our main title. So um, we could just type anything we want. I'll just type family show. And then that will get replaced here in the template. And from there, if you want, you can adjust the text size, make it a little bit bigger, or adjust the tracking. 
and you just go through and it can change each of the text items. I won't bore you with that because it's kind of obvious how that works, but your text will be replaced. So that's a basic idea of how to use a template, but here's some options. Let's say, hey, I have a 1280 by 720 project. Well, it's not a problem. I'll go to this, this different sequence here, which is 1280 by 720, and just if you look sequence settings, you can see it's 1280 by 720. Okay, I'll cancel that. So I'm going to go back to sequence, add master template, and I'm going to choose the same. I'm matching the frame rate here. That's really the key thing, I'm matching the frame rate. Even though this is 1920 by 1080, when I choose insert, this template will come into this project that is 1280 by 720, and we'll take a look at it here in just a second. Come a little bit forward, and it seems to fit just fine. So what it's doing, if we go to the Motion tab and we go up under the um, Scale, you can see it's automatically been scaled to fit, okay? So we, we provide the 1920 by 1080 because it scales to fit a 1280 by 720 frame. And we provide each of the most common frame rates, 2997, 2398, and 25 frames per second for folks in PAL. Now, this template was designed as an HD template. That's really its purpose. However, you can use it in an SD timeline. So here I have an SD sequence. It's just, it's actually a DV sequence, 720 by 480. Again, here I'll click Command-0, and you can see that it's 720 by 480. So in this case, if I choose to add master template, and I'll choose the same version because I'm still working in a 29.97 frame rate, and I hit Insert, what's going to happen here is that the frame size is different, right? The, the aspect ratio of standard definition is different than HD, so there's automatically going to be letterboxing. So let's move forward a bit, and you can see that it's letterboxed. It's looking a little soft because I'm way over 100% right here. I'm at 125%, but that's the only reason it's, it's soft here. It's only showing one field. So it's automatically letterboxing it. If you want to, in the Motion tab, you can see it's scaled it way down, you can scale it up to try to find a happy medium between letterboxing and cropping off the edges. So you can use this as an, in an SD project. It's just that it's going to be letterboxed if you do so. So that's the basics of using the template in Final Cut Pro. But let's say you want to go a little further. Let's say you want to remove some of these elements, uh, change some of these elements, change the timing. I just want to go to Motion and show you how you can do a couple of things to adjust the project. The way to get there is to right-click on the project and choose Open an Editor, which would change this whole template itself. Or you might want to choose Open Copy an Editor in order just to open a copy in Motion and have a separate version. So I'm going to choose Open an Copy an Editor. I'll save it, and then I'll meet you over in Motion. One more thing while we're in Final Cut that I should mention is that even though the template has audio, it has a music track, that music track is included with the template, so you do get that music, but templates that are saved and used in Final Cut and in Motion don't include audio. So if you want that audio track, you need to bring it in manually. I've already imported it. It's a Soundtrack Pro audio clip, so it's royalty-free, so you're free to use it any way you want but you'll need to import it. We supply this music, and then you'll need to go ahead and add it to your project. And then that project will play with the, with the music. So just something to be aware of, that that's a, a function or a limitation of motion templates, is that the audio, even if you save them with audio, you won't hear that audio when you apply the template in Final Cut Pro because it just brings in the video portion. Okay, let's go to motion.